Gates here from Pop Turnitus, me and to Alex and Cedric from Habs Fan TV. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Thank you both so much for your time. Thank you so Thank much you for having so us on, man. No problem. I mean, you're getting a little brick now, right? Like, I'm asking the questions now. You're not asking the questions. <laughs> yeah, it's weird being on the other side of it, but... You know, always have great stories to tell, so I'm sure you'll find us more than entertaining. Absolutely. Um, you know, it's interesting because every something special kind of grows from a first kind of preliminary idea. So you, I'm sure you had this idea of doing something involving your love for the Montreal Canadiens, doing something with the fans and everything. But then at some point, Alex, it kind of blossoms into something more than that. It, it, it becomes kind of like this big platform that you guys have created, which is really impressive. What was that kind of moment, would you say, Alex, where it started to blossom more than just kind of a little side thing to like, wow, that we have something here. People are really loving this stuff. Um, I definitely have to say it's this year. Like I, I did this, I started this in 2021 mm -hmm. on my own. And, uh, I would say things started really changing when Cedric came along. Uh, you know, he got Carey Price for an interview. Well, interview, he asked him one question, but <laughs> honestly, ask any journalist in Montreal, if they'd like to ask Carey Price one question, I bet you there'd be a line of them. So I think the fact that like we, we started getting touch a little bit with the players and the players started watching our stuff. And I, I think probably the biggest moment is just like, at some point, like we, you know, Danik is there, he's doing his thing and you realize there's like a hundred people there and it's like minus 20 and yeah. people are waiting and they're, they're wanting to watch the show that happens after the games, especially this year when the games have been absolutely terrible. So I think that's really the moment for me. A hundred percent. And Cedric, it's interesting because, you know, you're, kind, you, you have a little bit of both where you interview people for Habs Fan TV, but you're also kind of this like persona a little bit right there's this kind of gimmick a little bit where you you try to rile up the Habs players and wear kind of the other opponent's jerseys and everything what like how do you kind of come up with those things Cedric like do you just kind of talk to Alex and just figure out what you want to do and everything or is a lot of it just kind of winging it or being like hey I have this Caps jersey I'm gonna put it on and see what happens <laughs> like uh honestly I always started we went to do a road trip like in LA so yeah. went to San Jose LA and Anaheim yeah. And I had the jerseys of LA and San Jose. So I'm like, you know what? Let's just bring it. <laughs> so at that game, the San Jose game, I would add my San Jose jersey under my half jersey. And I wanted to get, get on the Jumbotron so bad. And there was like a camera guy right in front of us. So to get on the Jumbotron, I had to take my half jersey off because he didn't want, he didn't want me to burn him. So I took my half jersey off. Turns out I got on the Jumbotron and that's how it started. And Pizzetta saw it. <laughs> so the game after, I wore my Kings jersey under my Habs jersey. And when I went to see the game in Anaheim, I bought a Anaheim t-shirt. and had that t-shirt under my Habs jersey, and that's how it started. Oh, man. And oh. I love that you guys have on TikTok specifically. I mean, you're, what's amazing, too, about your platform is your clips kind of show up everywhere, not just TikTok. They're on Instagram. They're on Facebook. And I think that's the best part. But, like, I remember the one where you were wearing the Washington, the Washington Capitals while Pizzetta was my favorite because it's like we talked about this. And the best part is the way you guys cut that where you're like, yeah. you want the jersey? He's like, no, I don't want the jersey. <laughs> and, like, I don't know if it's that clip, but, like, you said I'm a fake fan. Yeah. Uh, look, I'm sorry, Michael. I'll, I won't wear any other team's jersey this year. Oh, it's 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 hilarious. Alex, how much kind of planning is there in the offseason? It's funny because I interview a lot of the players as well. And it's like, you, yeah, it's like off time and everything. But there's also like you you, you like kind of flip the switch and then boom, you're, mm -hmm. you're, you're in the fall kind of getting back into it. Is there a lot more planning than you think? Or are you also kind of taking it easy? Because you guys are at like all the games. You're at the Laval Rocket games. You need some time a little bit. <laughs> Well, you know, like, um, I, I would say that, like, probably last summer there wasn't much going on. But now, because of the kind of things that we want to do going forward, like, it's been pretty much nonstop. And now also, you know, we're doing content for the LSHL, the Summer League here in Montreal, 3v3, you know. So, Harvey Pinard is there, Nick Suzuki's there, you know. So, all these guys are there. So, it's another good opportunity for us to, you know, keep interviewing fans, keep the content rolling. And ideally, you know branch out into something a little bit more than just the Habs. Yes. And I think that that's what people are probably more interested to see. But, you know, like, we still want to maintain that kind of like, you know, we want other people from other teams, you know, especially the Leafs fans, they, they enjoy it, you know, to come and watch what's going on with the Habs. Well, it's you know? actually funny you mentioned that because I think 
that some of the interv- when you interview people that were wearing like other jerseys of teams, like you have one with a guy wearing like an Arizona Coyotes jersey, like I feel like those are the ones that circulate a lot more too. Of course, you have a lot of Montreal Canadian fans, but like I feel like yeah, it's become kind of like an account for hockey fans essentially, right? And that's kind of tough, right? Because obviously your focal point because you're there is with the Montreal Canadiens, but you're naturally you're it's gonna kind of. Go, like it's a go with the flow situation, right? Like you're gonna gravitate towards just hockey. Joe, you guys were just at the draft, weren't you? Yeah. Well, that that's like that's your prime example. Like yeah. you know, uh, said shot it back with Connor McDavid a little bit. <laughs> you know, I, I had a chance to ask questions to uh, you know Chris Letang, Allmark. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think like the the point of it is to kind of remain Hab central. But you know what, what? The Habs fans that come outside are extremely knowledgeable. So you yes. know what they the shit about you know the ottawa senators they could <laughs> shit about the maple leafs they they know their hockey so and no matter what you, you will always find rival fans that came from you know new brunswick newfoundland to support their team whether it's the habs whether it's someone else so we just we we just keep having uh you know good interactions with the rival fans and you know gives us good content cedric you love roasting the leaf fans like i see it like i i look at, oh, I, I love I, it i i know i see those clips and your passion is elevated like thirty percent. Have you seen the two? Have you seen the two percent? That's my favorite That's one. My favorite but the, one. Before that, the best part is the guy who's like, "You guys need sponsors. Go get milk." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like that was pretty funny. But also uh, the guy that Alex interviewed, who he's like, "Why do you keep coming back?" And then you guys clip it because I'm a loser. <laughs> no, Leafs fans are like the best fans to interview because they're so like funny and they're like defending their team so much, but it's just not working. Like. Get a new team. Just get, I think get a new team. Yeah. I think the best part is they just they they're they're trying to compare themselves to a team that is rebuilding, but mm-hmm. this is like their peak. Yeah. So when we play them and we beat them, and then they're like comparing our teams. I'm like, guys, you guys are obviously the better team on paper. Like the fact that you guys have to defend this, it it just it, it, it lights something up. And people it's like a sometimes say the same thing though about Montreal Canadian fans. I grew up a Montreal Canadian fan, and there were some people that kind of like would not be able to say, yeah, it's not our year for the Habs. Like it was kind of annoying to be honest with you. So there's both sides of it, but that's, a, that that's passionate hockey fan. You guys are with your team till, till the end of it. Right. That's, that's how it is. Yeah. I mean, definitely. Like, I, I think like now is like the first time that like Habs fans have kind of accepted a rebuild. Yep. So it's kind of weird, mm-hmm. you know, like <laughs> we're, we're losing and we're, we're chanting Bedard after games when that was just not going to happen anyway. I know. I had to scrap like at least like half of our footage because like he just wasn't coming. Like I'm I'm sorry guys. Like they 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 put on jerseys, they taped his name, they bought Adidas jerseys with his name on the back. Like, guys, it's just it's just not gonna happen. You know, it's interesting because you know, Danik is a fan favorite on the channel, and you guys like with all his gold chants and everything. But there's been other kind of clips that have gone really, really vi- viral that are always around. That like, have you have you kept in touch with him? Like, have you guys kept in touch with the StubHub kid? Because that, that was hilarious. He's a he's an OG actually. Like I I had met him, I had met him like the year before, and he's a, at some point like he he had taken out his phone. He's like, look at it, look at Matthew's hairline, and <laughs> oh, that's, that is, that's and that the was same like, that's the same kid, right? The same guy. It's the same. You see, I I. I, I recognize talent. I recognize talent. But that talent was actually so funny that. because it's just you, Cedric. He's innocently just asking, like, who sold you fake tickets? That was the best part. That was the best part. You did really well there because he's freaking out and you're keeping your composure. That's why I think I yeah, love yeah. that clip the most. <laughs> I, I know, I know, who the, I know he likes to freak out often, you know, so. I, I like to poke at him a little bit. <laughs> we, and then his friend laughed. That's probably one of my favorite clips, to be honest with you. Or the one with the Pizzetta one with the Washington Capitals is good, is good stuff, Cedric. I will say. Uh, we have one of my favorite Pizzetta clips. Pizzetta slips are just so good. Yeah. There's it's stuff cool that we that haven't he, even posted. It's, it's cool that he likes, like, it's cool that there's this understanding that they kind of see what it is. I mean, you guys went to California. The Trevor Zegra stuff was awesome. Yeah. I mean, look, like, <laughs> Pezzetta, Pezzetta, like, obviously he's a big fan, you know, like, we, we've spoken to him a bit in DMs and stuff like that. Like, he's obviously a pretty big fan. And it, it's fun to see, like, you know, I'm not asking for all the players to join into it. It's not, some, sometimes it's not their thing. But, you know, like, the fact that, like, some guys will appreciate it and they'll come up to us and say, you know, like, I like what you guys are doing. Like, it's good for the fans and everything. Like, it's a, it's a, it's a good plus for us. And, uh, you know, maybe it gives us incentive to maybe do some more stuff with players, do less, you know, so... Mm-hmm. 
Has um, there, have you guys talked about the schedule for next year? I mean, there's all the home games, but have you started kind of planning like when maybe you're going to do road trips and stuff? Because I, like I said, like after this year, it was a big year for Habs Fan TV. Like it was it was big. I'm sure if you looked at your numbers compared to the season before, like they probably were elevated like crazy. So have you guys started planning, Cedric, like in terms of like what you guys want to do? I mean, we for sure want to do a road trip, but like this year, if you want to do one, it would be like the Western Canadian one. Yeah. So that would be yeah. a good one because we already did the LA one. And then after that, it's like only like one or two games, but like the Western road trip is like five games. So that would be amazing. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. I think, I think that's the goal. Honestly, I'd go back to LA too, get to get back in the sun for a bit. Uh, would not complain at all, mm-hmm. but Me too. Uh, you know, because like I could go to Tampa and Florida, but like, it's basically you're back in Montreal because it's like, it's going to be all Habs fans. So, you know, like, Trying to evaluate it. Was it a cool moment where you guys were able to be like, I I honestly think just from my perspective, being someone that was in media and everything, I thought it was a really amazing thing to see Habs Fan TV getting media credited for the NHL draft because that kind of is a game changer in a lot of ways where, yeah, you know, you guys are fans of the sport going to do your thing, but there is this kind of like appreciation that comes with kind of getting accepted to be accredited and everything. So would you say that was kind of one of the biggest moments so far of this kind of, of, of this, this venture that you guys have specifically, Alex? Well, look, I mean, for that, we, we got accredited because we were hired by hockey DB in order to make content for them. Okay. So that's kind of how that happened. But you know, I think it's like, it's everyone's dream. I think that has grown up watching sports to be a fan and to suddenly find yourself in the same room as the journalist that you used to watch on TV yep. and being able to ask just a, just a question that everyone has on their mind, you know, like, I, I don't think that any Habs fan, no matter what you thought about the pick, if you thought it was good or bad, the question did need to be asked to Kent Hughes, why choose a defenseman in a very offensively loaded draft? Mm-hmm. And I think like you wouldn't, you wouldn't find that kind of question coming from a typical journalist and it, it takes kind of a fan, you know, slash reporter to kind of ask the right question. So it's a, it was, it's a cool moment to just see that, like, you know, you can really, if you're dedicated and you want to do this, like, there's a way for you to get there. 100%. Cedric, I do have a question about you from a journal, from an interview perspective when you're interviewing, because I've noticed this a lot. You interview a lot of what I call armchair GMs, right? You interview guys that just, you know, take the mini stick and just go off. Like, we need this, this, and this, and this. There is it different mindset depending on who it is where you can kind of play with them a little bit and ask them questions and kind of like challenge them a little bit or is some of them just like okay cool moving on like this doesn't make any sense like how does that work specifically with the armchair GMs because that's something that like I'm sure you guys come across those guys all the all the time. I mean, you really see how it goes with the person. Like we got like a set of questions like every game, yeah. but like. When like fans like start rallying up about something else, that's the funniest part because you're not prepared for that. You're absolutely not prepared. So that's why if people are like screaming about something, I'm just take the music. Like say whatever you want. It's your place. Just don't say anything stupid. <laughs> that's it. But uh, I mean, we just love the fans here. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. What's um? What's the plan with Danik? Like, what's like, what's like? He's 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 like a main. He's a like a mainstay for Habs Fan TV at this point, right? Oh, uh, Dan Danik's just an absolute beauty. Uh, <laughs> sorry for those hockey terms, but just a beauty. Um, we've met him actually at the Bell Center on on the game versus Pittsburgh Penguins. Yeah. Well, like we didn't realize at the time he had a season ticket. So after every game we saw him, we saw him, and then he starts doing he's doing his show. And like it really popped off. Yeah, it did. No, and and you guys like, you guys are credited to kind of help the, to to kind of get that out there, the exposure, right? I'm sure like there's like yeah. both of you guys help each other out, Alex, right? Well, look, I mean, Danik is like obviously like a, a mainstay of the channel. Like he, <laughs> we we like you, you you can't you can't avoid him. You can't avoid him. And and you know obviously in the future like there's there's probably going like one way or another, there's going to be stuff that we're going to be doing together, you know, but like, I never wanted to put the pressure on him to be like, you know, okay, come every game and do a show. And like, I honestly, like, you know, some games he, he never came, you know, he, he went home early. He was too, he was too buzzed. He went home. 
You know, like, I don't want to have like a kind of like pressure thing with him. I just rather him like come whenever he wants, have fun if he wants. And, you know, like, honestly, I, I know for him that like this really changed his life in a, in a very like special way. Mm-hmm. Like he was at a certain place in his life. And because of this, he's, you know, really started to come into his own and he started really enjoying life more. So I think it's I think it's just something that I like to offer anyone, you know, any fan that wants to have their voice. Uh, the goal is to give it to them and you know if they say something funny it's even better and if they don't and they're serious like I'll post it too so I think that's kind of the goal I I don't even want to post just opinions that I agree with as long as it's within the the limit of you know reasonableness let's put it that way 100% and I find this interesting and you know Cedric and Alex you can kind of chime in here because even if you have a few other people, I know this for a fact that I feel like this is the biggest misconception because the same thing with Pop Turnative. People, you know, think I have a really big team when I have a few kind of writers here and there, but like it's me doing everything. It's you guys doing everything. Like I feel like people don't realize that sometimes, right? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, uh, I became, uh, well, I, I'm, I have a lot of green in my background. I have a, I, I graduated from UDM. I did Osgood for a year. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, I turned into a video editor, videographer, you name it. Every Everything that's posted on social media, it yeah. comes from me. You know, Cedriki comes up with the questions and everything. So it's a, it's a team effort on that part. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I've, I've, it's it, everything, everything is me, you know? So it's, it's something that ideally now I'm going to start delegating that kind of part. Maybe yeah. Cedric pick up some of the. Because it's going to, it's going to naturally get bigger this year for it's sure. Like, no, 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 I just, I don't even have the time to edit some amazing clips that I know are there, but I yeah. just don't have time. Yeah. So I think, uh, and I, I mean, it'll, it'll come this summer. That's why we're, we're planning for it. No, absolutely. And, and Cedric, it's interesting too, because I find, you know, there's, do you find it sometimes a little bit stressful? The fact that there's multiple platforms, because obviously you have the TikTok, but you guys got the YouTube, you guys got the Facebook, you guys got the Instagram. Like it does get kind of stressful. And what we try to do on pop alternative is we know that like, if we post the same stuff on our Instagram, Facebook and TikTok, people are going to like, they're going to just subscribe to one of them. They're not going to do all like, and I've noticed that with you guys, you guys post different clips on different stuff. Like it's stressful sometimes though. Right. Cedric, like keeping up with all the platforms. I mean, Alex is charged with that with yeah. posting this yeah. videos and everything, but it is, but you repost. I'm asking you because you, you repost and all that stuff too. Right. Like, yeah, I repost yeah. for sure. Like to make people see like the videos and everything, but like stressful, not really because people are going to see it one way or another. And like, I think they're subscribed. Yeah. But, no, no, hundred percent. It's, I think honestly, I, I haven't noticed a huge difference in terms of what we post on YouTube or TikTok or, or Instagram. They all, they all pop off in their own way. Like, you know, it's actually, it's actually a good uh, metric for me to know, okay, was this video just not meant for TikTok? If it blows up on Instagram and YouTube, you know, like obviously our long form content where I, I used to post that on Instagram. I'm mm-hmm. sure if you scroll down like enough of the 900 posts, you'll find a few of them. But, yeah. you know, like every everything has its own audience, you know, like the, there's little kids that will come up with us. I asked them where they saw us. They saw us on TikTok. You know, some older people come up to us. They're like in the 30s, 40s. Oh, I, I watch you guys on YouTube. YouTube. So yeah. Also, it's also a kind, a kind of a cool way to to see where your audience is coming from, the kind of demographic, the age. Uh, just, just to know what kind of content you should maybe be, you know, putting in a certain way, you know, like, let's say we interviewed Craig button on YouTube. Yep. That's perfect. You know, but let's say we post on TikTok, Instagram, you know, kids, kids don't know Craig, Button. they didn't grow up with Craig button. I did, you know? So it's, it's funny because it started this, this show started as a, like, we did a lot of like hockey interviews and like pop culture interviews a little bit, Craig button. And Thomas Shabbat are both the most like get like they've been on the show the most as a guest basically, and there was a oh. funny rivalry going on where like <laughs> Craig Butt was like, "How many more times do I have to be on to get more than Tom Shabbat?" <laughs> I'm I'm not surprised. Craig is just an amazing person. Like we oh. we had never met him, and we we asked him for the interview, and he totally agreed. And the next day, like he you know he he retweeted it uh, yeah. on on his Twitter. It blew up on YouTube. Mm-hmm. uh and and like we we saw him the next day at day two of the draft and we we're like you know i was like you know craig like you really you really didn't have to do that and i i really appreciate everything and he's like yeah take my number like please let's keep in contact like you uh, you want to ask me anything like in the sports world you 
do it. So I'm, I'm not surprised that you tell me that Craig Button is one of your most. Oh, dude, uh, he's also yeah. I met, I met him when I was interning doing social media for the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League, and like he literally is a mentor to me. Like he helped me for like he, he I learned a lot from Craig Button, so it's pretty crazy. And I was when I saw that that video, I was like, this is amazing. And that's the type of guy he is. He loves kind of to promote everyone and kind of share share the love, which is awesome. Yeah. Um, last quick question before we wrap up. Um, Alex, I want to know what is next goal wise for Habs Fan TV? Like, what is the big, there might be a lot of goals, but what is kind of the big kind of master plan so far? Cause it might change what you want to do this year with it. I think, I think ideally there's going to be a podcast in the works, Okay, but I'm, I'm very, I'm very much set on having something that's not typical to any other podcast that we that's ever been seen before, you know, because I, I see hockey podcasts popping up like, like weeds on grass, you know, like it's, it, but it's, it's all, all about, a bit it's all weedy. armchair GMs though. It's all like, it's so, all about the game. Like you could do something else too, right? Like exactly. So I, I'm just trying to find a format that probably works for the best of us. Yep. Um, but I think, you know, beyond that, I think like, I'll really feel like I've completed everything when Habs Fan TV becomes the reference in hockey, just yep. in general. Like, yep. I want, ideally, I want the Toronto fans to be watching. I want the Chicago fans to be watching. I want Arizona fans to be watching. I want everyone to watch mm -hmm. and to know what's going on with the Habs and look at the kind of excitement that there is outside the Bell Center every night and for people to tell themselves, this is what we need on our team. And ideally... You know, I think we'll we'll really know the kind of impact we've had when, you know, we start seeing other kind of outlets like that grow in different markets. I think for me, that'll be a, it'll be a big thing. And said, do you want to say anything quickly to all the Habs fan TV fans who are from all over the world? Because I see it. There are some people like from all over the world that watch your stuff, which is awesome. Well, honestly, like since we start, well, since Ali started it, started it, and uh, I joined, like our life just changed, and like because of the fans. Like it says, it said his name, like has fun TV. Like we couldn't be there without them. Like we're really appre appreciative and like we, we love you guys. That's awesome. Um, and uh, I wanted to thank you both for coming on Pop Turtle. It was actually great chatting with you guys. So thank you so much for your time. Seriously. Great talking to you too, man. Can you really plug good. away, Alex? Like everything, like, like plug away, have fun TV on all the platforms, right? Plug away. Well, yeah. listen, it's very simple. <laughs> on all the platforms, it's the same thing at Habs Fan TV. On Twitter, there's an underscore, and on YouTube, it's an underscore. But listen, you, you can't miss the red, blue, and white. It's it, you, you'll 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 know it's us. You'll know it's us. I promise. Awesome. Well, this has been Pop Turner at youtubecom slash Pop Turner for previous episodes. Of course, this is Cedric and Alex from Habs Fan TV and PD Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.